I'm going to start again. Now we're doing a, a secret record that everybody knows about. <laughs> and so uh, please the Lord and also Alberto lo looks pleased. He's happy. He doesn't care if you don't see his head. You just see his body without a head. Well, <laughs> he doesn't care. Now you see me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, there. There you are. Lord, uh, man, hey, 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 you have the authority to see me. This is a hologram of Alberto Valdez. There's the hologram of Henry and Susan. I'd like you to, to meet. Okay. But he's not hollering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the hologram of Martin. Martin's hologram. Woo! Okay, you think, let, let's uh, let's get this. Why do you think this? Uh, let's get the show on the road. So, yeah. <laughs> welcome, the road. welcome everyone. This is the Global <laughs> Heart Think Tank. The Heart Think Tank show. No secret. <laughs> it's a little ironic, and um, we're we're tuning into the secret chord right now. <laughs> Thanks to Susan. <laughs> Did you bring your accordion? You asking me or Susan? Susan. Oh. Right, do you have an accordion? No, not me. Huh? No, and I was trying to think of a good line to follow up accordion, but as tough one. Recordion. Re re yeah, recordion. that's what I was thinking. The recordion. So so we're live now, everyone. <laughs> we are? And welcome. <laughs> we are recording now. We're alive, he said. We're, we're in the connection field. Did you say we're live or alive? Both. <laughs> we're alive to possibility in the field of the heart. Oh. And we're, we're opening to the heart wisdom, the heart thinking, the heart, the depth of the heart's offering that we each bring to this circle. And that's what makes it the secret and sacred chord. <laughs> so let's take, take a few breaths together we, after we're taking a few laughs together. Let's take a few laughs together. <laughs> you can bounce if you want. <laughs> it's okay to bounce. Can I wear my corduroys? <laughs> yeah, there's secret corduroys. <laughs> as as well there should be, corduroys should always be a secret. <laughs> so now let's take a few breaths together you know, that, we, that, we, that we've laughed. Uh, maybe I should mute myself. <laughs> And thankfully, nobody left while we were left laughing. Left. Relax, relax. Be, uh, just notice, notice where you are. Wherever you are at at this moment is perfect. Thank you for showing up. Ah. Uh, on the exhales, release anything that, any tension, any stress, any excess giggles. <laughs> Breathing in love and light. <laughs> Breathing out any disharmony. So we, we again come together, we join our hearts for the good of the whole, for the highest good, and for, for awakening, for healing, especially at this time on our planet and within the body, mind, spirit of people all around the world to opening to the 
the deeper connection that we experience through the heart. Ah. Thankful for the animal presences here with Susan. We invite their heart wisdom as well. And in your own timing, return back to wherever you are. Mm. Mm. So here we are. And let's open to this opportunity. And last week, it looks like you were all here with us last week, and we opened to considering our full potential self. And we tuned into what the, what that felt like with those those words those and we also open to ourselves as whole beings and to what those words those invitations evoked in us And some similarities between both of them and also the differences. Maybe um, just to open to what you remember from that. So I'm going to kind of expand a little more and include the conversation and, and the mentoring stewards that we spoke about that, that I think that that theme was part of what we were speaking about and um, just opening to the, the sovereignty, the sacred authority, opening to each of us being a unique expression of, of the divine, of life, of God, goddess, however you perceive that. And I think those that deeply connects with our full potential self and with our whole being, which I'm remembering it was expressed, I think Carol expressed it, especially the whole being called in the joy aspect, the feeling in her. Um, and for me, I'm getting the word celebration. And, and that word is, is kind of a key one to my spirit, a key value. And whenever I say the word celebration, I also bring in, I'm also called from inside to use the word honoring. Uh, just an honoring of life, honoring of you, unique expression in us. So, yeah. Uh, and also, I want to share that, that I, I think I said it this morning, that I was part of an organization back in the late 70s or mid 70s that was called one World Fellowship. Uh, it was a nonprofit organization that um, that I was involved with. And the understanding with that is that is that people who maybe knew nothing about One World Fellowship um, 
were, were part of that because they were already living that. They were already part of it, you know, seeing it in that way. And, and so, in a sense, so I see good of the whole in the same, that people who, who, you know, are not directly involved or directly involved with mentoring, Stuart, quotation mark, they are very much mentoring stewards and helping to birth the, um, the new, the new, world, the new time that, um, what am I saying? So I'm just a little bit expanding the notion and actually I want to bring in a quote from Ruth Bader Ginsburg that she said, or was said of her that she was continually expanding the word we and what we the people meant. So for me, we are continually expanding the we, you know, of the connection with, with all other sovereign, sovereign beings around the planet and just realizing that connection. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to wait, 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 one second, Carol, I'm just about finished, but thank you. Um, to also go back to something that at the end of last week that I brought in about the different kinds of connection and connect linking with the Eskimos that have different words for snow or different words maybe for love or something and that there are so many different kinds of connections so so I'm complete but I invite you know from any of that or or maybe even from earlier today in the conversation in the sharings today something that is still uh, a light alive in you. So I place the talking stick in the circle. Thank you so much for using the word honoring. I like that word. It's beautiful. Um, it makes me think of respect as a synonym. And it just feels so good to not only honor and respect ourselves, but when you say all sentient beings, forgive me, but does that mean people or does that mean everything and everyone? Did I say sentient beings or you're bringing that in? I think you did. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember using that word, but I would love to, to bring that in. And, and all sentient beings, I think that's that's kind of all, all beings in a certain way. Yeah. So that would that include animals and plants and everything, or would most, that most definitely? So when it, when uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg spoke of we the people, she was speaking of just people, right? She wasn't obviously she was speaking of people only. Yeah, she was continually expanding the word we. But but, oh. but but I would like that to you know to include the stone people and the you know yeah me too because people. yeah yeah I'm feeling so strongly today about the oneness of love how it's in everything and everyone and it starts with ourselves and I wanted to share a quick little story if I could um, there was a 
a young woman who lived in my neighborhood who I saw sitting under a tree with a, a duck who was on her eggs, sitting on her eggs, and she was keeping her company one day. And uh, I noticed that that duck never got off of her eggs because the tree would let the light in and it would get very hot. So she didn't want the eggs to get hot and she needed water, but she wouldn't go in the lake and she needed food, but she wouldn't leave the eggs. So I went to sit with her I, and I thought, wow, you know, I learned how to love from this young girl who was sitting there. And it was, it was so beautiful to sit there with this duck. I, I would bring her water and we didn't say anything to each other that I know of, except we just kept each other company and there was this beautiful feeling of caring and appreciation. And then um, the seasons changed and the sun wasn't so hot, so I stopped being there uh, for a few days. And there was a knock on my door and I opened it up and there she was with her little ducklings. She came to show me her little ducklings, like, you know, in appreciation for the love and the care and being there for her. And it was symbolic to me about that love never goes unnoticed, that it's in all beings and all creatures and uh, that oneness of we. And I think that, you know, being that we're celebrating the indigenous people so much and that that was part of their sacred teachings that from my understanding that we needed to understand that we're all one and the sacredness and the honor and the respect. So, um, yeah, I think Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I saw a little thing on the, on the internet today. And she, uh, there was a quote from her saying, I brought the fly or something like that. <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm glad I got to share that story. It's a sacred story of mine in my life. And uh, Paralandra, I don't know how familiar you are with it, but there's this woman in Virginia that was shown by the light that there's much more going on than we can see with our eyes, hear with our ears. And she was taught how to share her harvest with, with the animals, you know, because she was, I guess, frustrated they were eating her crops and she was taught by the light itself, you know, to put a portion aside for the animals, you know, and tell them this part's for you so you don't need to, you know, eat this part and I made that for you. And we did that recently in our garden because the iguanas, they like to eat all our flowers. And so we made one area for them. And then we have an area that we have a little fence around and they don't bother our area at all. And it's just an honoring. And uh, it's so beautiful that we can incorporate during this time all the sacred teachings and ways that we are learning about and one more thing, um, a friend of mine said something really neat today about, <laughs> because we were both saying, oh, we want to move somewhere where there's more mountains or rivers or whatever. And uh, she said, well, why don't we just not only give the answers to God, but give God the questions too. Whatever your question might be that you have in your heart, give the question up as well as the answer. I never thought of that before. I think that is how we can be in peace. Besides laughing, which is my second favorite thing. <laughs> I don't know if I answered any questions, but thanks for letting me share. <laughs> Thank you, that was beautiful. The story 
Uh, yeah. And it's deepening our connections. We're expanding our sense of we to, um, to include all, all sentient beings, or at least uh, that's definitely a potential, you know, including the stone people and the plant people. And the, yeah. Thank you. Yes, Carol, like, thank you for that lovely duck story. Did, did the duck live far from your house? No, it was only like, I live in a villa, so maybe it was like six or seven villas uh, away from me. There was a big tree on the lake, and I live on the lake. So it was, you know, not far at all. That, that's amazing, though. The duck yeah, came to your house. it's amazing that she knew where I lived. I mean, I didn't think she knew where I lived. There, I mean, anything in nature, like I was thinking the other day, I don't know, I was on call, I forgot to say, I was talking about if you're alone and like, I don't know how many hundreds of trees I'm surrounded by and they're all sentient, you know, and it's like, you surround it. Oh, we were doing some meditation to put our, ground our energy down into the center of the earth and like a tree's roots and then I just like felt all the trees you know mm. and I felt it before but I mean I'm surrounded by hundreds if not thousands of beings mm. and then all the beings that live on on them you know and, and I believe nature is very aware of mm. what the humans are doing they, they keep an eye on us you know so mm. And I have a friend who has said we were talking about channel information coming through. And he just said, because he's called a channel and a visionary, but he's like, what isn't a channel? You know, everything's a channel, right? A yeah. channel is fine. So anyway, Bird just made an interesting walk. But um, yeah, so great story. Thank you. You'll always be at peace. It's crazy to be at peace in nature. You just be in it. So thank you. You're welcome. Welcome, Miranda. Good to see your your presence. Were you here for part of last week? It was either last week or the week before where we are we're opening to our full potential self and whole being. Yes, okay. Trying to get here. <laughs> I'm in the middle of my work day and- uh, Oh, okay, uh, that's fine. No, no, today is, is just, it's a heavy day because we're, you know, we're dealing with the reality of, of COVID, right? And I deal with that with, with my clients and I've been trying to take what I have here, like with a full cup and, and place it in my people. <laughs> um, and today is heavy. Today is a heavy day mm -hmm. where I feel like my words hit a brick wall and came bouncing back at me. <laughs> and as mm -hmm. soon as I walk into the room, I think, oh, well, why can't all people be so receptive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, why? And nothing that needs to be a battle. Nothing needs to be. You choose. You choose that. And then I got thinking about how often I chose that. And I guess it works for perfectly for this conversation of like coming into your full potential and unlocking your full power. And mm -hmm. and part of doing that, you have to realize where you have fallen short and be okay with it. Like, I don't have to have an emotional attachment to it. I don't have to have, I don't have to put myself down. It just, sometimes you're like, oh, it's come full circle. <laughs> There's another lesson in it. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't mean to be heavy. I don't, I don't want to bring in a heavy, a weight here. Um, I am very grateful for hearing the, can we ask a question and receive an answer in the same moment? 
what a beautiful thought that is. And then to be reminded to root yourself and ground yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's really all as simple as it needs to be. Do you, and that, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Do you, do you breathe with your clients or invite them to take, take some breaths and um, what's the other part? Sorry, I forgot who was coming through. But but just ways, of, oh, breathing in through the heart and out through the heart. Oh, I never thought to do it that way. Mm -hmm. That's a good way. I usually what I do is uh, in through the earth, up through my body, into mm -hmm. their body, and then I get it to come back into my body, and mm -hmm. then out to the universe and then back down. I do have to go. That's okay. My my theme for next Monday's uh, she's not here but uh, <laughs> is is about includes just a part of breathing in and out through the heart that's kind of a universal way to to bring in more in more light but anyway uh, anyone else like to share. That was a great Miranda connection. Very brief, but that was really great because I was wondering where she was today. I know she she works during the day, but sometimes when you don't see people for a while, you like I don't worry about them. But I'm like, oh, I wonder what Miranda's doing. And she said she's been having a heavy day, and I thought the morning was kind of heavy. You know that the the stewardship talk and the hour after. And maybe just hold in space. Maybe it's just that ha kind of a heavy day on the planet. I don't know. You know that there's friction. There's friction. And Pluto and Mars are hanging out together doing something today. But um, so even among people with all good intentions, as much as we can be, there was even friction in holding that space. So. You know, it's like Miranda almost got the information that we were doing in the discussion and learning a lesson out there on her own with her clients that, you know, doesn't, you just got to throw stuff out there and see where it sticks or it doesn't or it bounces back. And um, so that was very interesting how she just popped in like that on that connection. That's the point I wanted to make. I'm complete. Speaking of answers, I heard kind of a channeled answer. I don't remember the question, but it somewhat relates, or somewhat relates to, for me, to good of whole. And it feels like we are working to expand. We are opening to expand the portals within us that are already open. And I, and I really kind of relate to those words that we're opening ourselves, new doorways and new to different parts of ourselves so that we can be more of who and what we came here to do and, and more joyfully. So, so just that, that those words of working to expand the portals within ourselves that are already open and to maybe even open new portals. And I think part of the sharing this morning was kind of an invitation to new portals or new words or new ways of viewing and, and especially in ways that, that helps to open doorways within each of us that we can more fully uh, inhabit our bodies inhabit our lives in in celebration, in honoring, and seeing that each person, it's not about any of us individually, it's about all of us together and, and all people and all beings, how how we can support that and 
and you know, and and by our presence be as Alberto said this morning, we can, it can be as a heart offering. You know, it's a heart offering by our presence. And one of my the greatest things that I like about the connection field about heart resonance is really learning how to be present. How to be present, you know, especially when we're taking in and we're listening to to others as well as listening within that 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 so allows me to 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 be a supporter to be more of a I don't know if the word midwife is is appropriate right here but to allow the each person's heart offering to be shared and also for people to get in touch with the the gifts within their own heart you know their own their own gifts and their own abilities as as healers as teachers as uh, as brothers and sisters. So, and, and I'm starting to, to learn to feel more comfortable using those words. I didn't use the word, you know, of just saying or seeing other people as brothers and sisters. And so, so I just noticed that, that, that doorway, that portal, is maybe opening so I can use different words. And, and through that, I establish a new way of connection. It opens the door a little wider to, to the other person to start to think, to start to feel, to start to think, to start to feel in those, in those terms. And I'm complete. Hi, Henry. Uh, really, I agree with you about the words, but the, the issue is the when we bring too many words, we bring more concepts. No? And then the, we concept, we create duality. Um, we create creation, more thinking. And the heart, like you say now, is, is one. No lie, I hear today somebody say, oh, my heart is different, maybe my heart is different than your heart. I think so. They, they, they are concepts that we have in different hearts, you know. Uh, because the heart, the feeling of the heart is, is unique, is trust. It's gratitude, it's love, it's all these manifestations, the feeling of the heart. And that's the way we are here to bring together. That's the way here to bring unification. Mm -hmm. And the heart don't have any body, don't have any personality. Like you say, we need to be on the side you know, coming here to be like, the, okay, I know everything. No. We participate and we bring the offering. Mm. And we are open to the heart. And we listen to the heart. Mm. It's beautiful. Mm. Open the heart. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Open up your heart to the universe of love and he will fill you up. Open up your heart to the universe of love and she will fill us up. Hey. Oh. Uh -oh. The secret chord has spoken. <laughs> I was tapping in on that while Alberto was speaking, you know, the sacred heart chord, like once, like that is the collective consciousness we want to vibrate. 
because you get what you think about, you know? So it just makes sense. Once you start to vibrate at that frequency, others and the universe and the plants and animals, they like that heart frequency. Some people say it's 528 hertz of different numbers, but you know, we all know what it feels like. And um, there is something greater than the sum of the parts in these rooms, even though there's just a few people here right now. One day I came in, I thought there was something going on in the Zoom room, but I, I didn't look at the schedule and I just hit the link and came in and it was just there, good of the whole, but there was nothing going on, you know? And I just sat there a minute. I'm like, nope, not the same if other people aren't here. You know, it was nice. It's like, oh, I'm in the Zoom room all by myself. And, um, but there's, you know, there's some connection we all have, like sisters and brothers. I do feel like um, your family. It's kind of like one big extended family and uh, without too many fights and, and conflicts. You know, it's, the, it's like the, it's, it's nice to have connections that are peace-minded. You know, that are peace hearted, that are heart first. Um, not that there might not be heavy days, but, or friction, but, um, you know, it's definitely the sacred heart cord and hallelujah. So thank you, Alberto and Carol, for your song and your words. I'm complete. Well, thank you to you. I, I would like to add something, Henry, unless you had something else you wanted to say. Okay. Um, you know, at the risk of sounding crazy, which has been like, you know, something I've had to deal with my whole life because I've like had like different kinds of ways of thinking than most people in my life. So, but I would like to put this out there because I think that all of us have had that experience where we're there's a lot more going on than meets the eye, as I have said before. So um, I have had the experience with, with a tree in particular that I, I was sitting under. And, and all of a sudden the tree became liquid light. And it started raining its light onto me. And I think, you know, there are many other experiences I've had like that where I, you know, even after a didgeridoo experience where I, I could not go back into where there were walls. I had to be out in nature and I could see, you know, the lake where I lived, there was a fish like the size of the whole lake. The spirit of a fish was there. I mean, I think that we had, that there's these guardians and keepers of stones and plants and spirits and, and, and amazing magic carpets and, and all these things that are really exist. And, you know, it's not like, you know, childhood, oh, you know, you better do your homework or something. <laughs> I think we're moving into that, you know, where we're, we're opening up, like you said, a portal. And, and Julie Down said something too about the opening up, uh, creating more space to open freely, to have that freedom. And I'm just like really excited about that because I think they're the new children that are, are being born, you know, they're coming with that knowledge, with that experience. And, and, and it's really wonderful. I mean, the things that we can experience between each other to, to, to experience rainbows of light of color coming between us and, and different colors and things like that. And, I don't know, it makes me really excited. I was watching, we were watching um, Saturday Night Alive the other night. I don't know if you watched it, but uh, there's some amazing stuff on that show every Saturday night. And Jay Myers, who has the uh, light touch, he had a painting behind him. Like it had to be done by some extraterrestrial because it was so luminous. It was colors that we never saw before. And it was so different and beautiful. And, and um, I'm excited about that. Other dimensions, you know, that we can, we're so multi-dimensional and yet we seem like we're like, you know, only here. 
but we're not. We're, there's much more going on and it's so amazing. Anyways, I felt safe to share, so thanks. <laughs> So that's all about going deeper, which is the kind of subtitle of this uh, this hour, or an hour and a half, um, and just just finding ways to open to the fuller, the greater fullness of who we are, and actually in a channeled um, uh, message also was. I, I think I heard the words that competition is mute in this new time. It's on mute, or that's how I'd interpret it. And I really liked that, you know, just going to a place of really honoring the light, the divinity in each person, you know, maybe we, we compete to play a game or something like that, but still seeing the beauty, the light, the goodness, the, the unique expression in each of us. So, so just kind of seeing the, you know, or sensing that we're moving to that place where competition is mute, where we you know, we, each of our sharings helps to, each of our unique expressions helps to lift the wholeness, the good of, for the good of the whole, and helps to expand, to expand each of us. Thanks, Henry. And, and competition, <laughs> This sounds so new age, but it's a lower frequency and it brings you down and it drains your energy. And right now, I mean, it doesn't inspire me to be in competition. Yes, I understand if you're a sport, you know, that kind of competition. But as far as competing to be human beings living on this earth, you know, that's not going to get us very far. So yeah, mute, you know, competition's on mute and it doesn't get to unmute itself. And if it does, well, somebody will mute it because it's so important we come together and we don't all have to be the same. We don't all have to have the same function. It's like, you know, bacteria grow single cell in a plate, but then at some point they run out of nutrients and they start to pile up on each other and they actually start to act like a multi-celled organism. You know, and they take on the job that's for the good of the whole, you know. So, whereas before that time, maybe they were just competing for food in the Petri dish. But then there comes a point, if any of them want to survive, they have to take on a higher function. And I, I think that's where we're at. And, and like Carol seeing other dimensions or I have a video of a tree that rained light. I even have it somewhere. I should dig it out and send it. I put it into a transportable form. But, um, you know, that might be the stuff that saves us, being able to see the other dimensions and the other energies and, you know, merging into those higher realms. You know, that's probably where all the energy, you know, there's, there's enough. There's enough for us to, to make it through this and hopefully live with a planet if we have access to that and, and we don't compete because the competition is just a distraction from the task at hand, I feel. So thank you about that. I'm complete. And moving competition aside is we are honoring the light within each of us and it that light within each of us is just a reflection of our own light so so we're beginning to to expand when we see one another as a part of ourselves unique expression of that that expands our whole sense of self as well and and released me it helps to round out 
the greater wholeness of who we are. Susan, one time, um, I used to live in Miami, in Coconut Grove, and um, there were a few of us that we used to like to go to this park by a lake and, and have satsang, and we would just share, and, and uh, it would be really full of love and, and joy, peace. And one time, an alligator came out of the lake and just wanted to listen and put his head down just like he wanted to be part of the group and feel the energy. And, and we didn't get scared and it wasn't scared and we just continued on sharing and he just was absorbing that beautiful energy and, and then he left. And I see it like that. I'm not always there, I wish I was, but I, I do see and notice that happening from time to time that uh, that we're all connected and like we all want to feel that and, and the thing about competition like last night I said Alberto come on let's play some music you know I see couples playing you know together let's tune your guitar to my guitar and see what we could do and it was not happening <laughs> And I and I just realized, okay, well, everybody's unique, you know, so this isn't our thing, but um, why don't you just play the drum and sing, and, and then later maybe I'll play the guitar or something like that. And it worked out really good, you know, and it, it, it was cooperation, but in a different way than I thought it was going to happen, you know. We weren't creating that har harmony like I was wanting, but it was, it was really neat, too, because I got to enjoy in a harmonious way, what he had to share, and he got to appreciate what I was sharing, but it wasn't like together. So it was cooperation in a, in a different way than I had thought. Well, Carol, thanks for the alligator story. And I thought your singing and Madeline just a little bit ago was wonderful. So that's the secret, you know, maybe the two guitars together isn't the secret chord, but you can find it in some other combination. So I, I loved it. Thank you. Welcome back, Martin. Have you been connected a little bit or you visit, have been visiting with your son? Yep, I was visiting with my son. Yeah. Okay. I have... Um, I heard little bits here and there. I definitely heard the duck story, mm -hmm. uh, the tree story, um, a little bit from Miranda, which Miranda sent me a note to, to apologize. She got startled by a client showing up early um, and she just wanted to make sure that you all didn't receive her as being rude. I told her I'd pass that along. Um, sentient beings, uh, we could roll back on that as includes all things. Um, in the Buddhist definition, um, some say it's things with that are meant to feel. Um, so some would debate, but I think that in this group, we would all agree that the rock people and the plant people all have feelings as well. So, um, and that's all I can remember to comment on right now. There was something that Henry brought up, of course, but it's not, it's not clicking with me right now. Well, good to have you back here, your presence again. And let's, uh, one thing came to mind about the word connection. Something that I said near the beginning is, it is for me, I see of connection almost like in the Eskimos where they had many different words for snow that, and, and for something, for some other things too, that I wanted to, to kind of open to different kinds of connection. Uh, the first one is, is maybe opening to, you know, take a breath or two.
and I invite you to open to a magical connection that you may have had, maybe similar to Carol's or different where the tree, she was sitting under a tree and the tree turned to light. Um, I don't remember the other one that, that she shared, but you know, or some, some connection with an animal or, or maybe even in a dream. So, so just open to that, breathe into that, go back to that experience, or maybe even create a new experience of a connection with a tree that you haven't had before. And notice, notice your experience. or maybe some, some beautiful music that transported you to a magical place or connection with, with another. It took you to a magical place or even in the connection field. Take a few breaths and just open to see, sense, or feel what your experience is like in your body. in your heart. Uh, or even connection in a Buddhist meditation in a circle of others or perhaps a meta meditation, kindness, loving kindness meditation. See, sense, or feel your experience. Maybe it's colors, maybe it's an image, a vision. Maybe it's while you are dancing. This is one kind of connection. And allow yourself to, to drink it in. Like nectar. nourishment. Or just being with a child or with an animal. A duck. Hmm. Give you another minute or two if you want to just take it in, allow yourself to be fed, to be nourished by any or all of those. Gifts. and returning back to the group, to our circle. I invite you to share about your connection or connections, maybe more than one, what it felt like, what its message was. I guess you could write it down if you have, if you want to. Something that really stood out for you.
Mine haven't been, I, I've had a few connections with nature, but my strongest ones are with people, uh, particularly the first time that I meet them. And I can think of a number of instances, uh, one of my good friends, Paul and Rosanna in particular, where the first time that we met and shook hands or just had a conversation, it was boom right away. Paul in particular, I remember shaking his hand we were meeting um, on a job in Los Angeles and shaking his hand and both of us stood there and we're like, whoa. Um, and we didn't necessarily talk about it in that moment. You could tell that sort of mutual reaction, but you know, uh, a few weeks later we did actually talk about it once we did see that we were connected somehow. Um, we became good friends and and partners and worked on several projects together and it was a lot of fun in that way. Um, but I don't know, it's that sense of, like I, I remember um, when I was a manager of a restaurant, uh, a woman walked in for a job and I hired her without even asking any questions. I just knew, she said, she literally said, Hi, I was wondering if you're hiring me, and I said yes. And I had her fill out an application, and I didn't even care what she wrote down. I just kind of played along. So you have that. You have that sense, and I think that you have that sense in this um, in this group as well, um, with your connection with certain people and certain uh, where we grab start gravitating towards each other and things like that. Um, I do, I'll tell one more that I just that popped into my head. The last dog that I had when I went to uh, the Humane Society to pick out a dog, um, looked at a couple when we went in a room and they would bring the dogs in and stuff like that. And the dog that chose me, and I still say that, is because that's what the woman said, is that the dog hadn't interacted really with anyone. And when I came into the room and they saw the way the dog reacted to me, they were like, oh my. Um, so there's that sort of uh, connection too. Thank you. So there's some kind of magic. And how did, how does, could you share if you like something about what your experience, what your memory of your experience was in your body? And you, you somewhat described that, but. Um, I don't know. I don't see. Or emotions. Of, yeah. Um, I think that I feel them. I think that I have a sense of feeling and I have the sort of, um, that's my one of my senses heightened senses is um feeling the tension in places and seeing that um you know i'm extremely empathic so i know that too uh, i can tell the difference with and even people that i'm not around a lot if they're having a bad day or having a glorious day i can just feel that sort of thing so i would just say it's just sort of uh an energetic pulse and the times that I have connected with nature, it's the same way. So, I mean, that's still one of the things that I'm working on and developing. And now that I'm not, you know, the stressed out uh, restaurant businessman and stuff like that, I have more time to feed into that and understand. And I can't tell you the number of things that have come to me lately where I can just sit and go, oh my God, that was, there was another act of intuition. There was another feeling that was real, you know, and that sort of thing kind of playing back. So now I am able to, 
I, I want to say experiment. I don't know if it's the right, right word, but actually put it into more use and follow it to see if those instincts are correct or not. I'm more aware of it, I guess, is the point. Thank you, Mark. Anyone else? It was your experience? The experience, I think for every human being having a, a lot of experience with connection. Like I connect with her because we are searching for the illumination for who we are. And we go into this program of Sasan. Um, we are trying to find ourselves. Um, that was beautiful. I still with this connection. <laughs> and on the other side, for me, connection in the same time is divine protection. It's, I had a little story, very strong life. We was, I, in Colombia, I was with one friend, a lady. We were recollecting some money for, for pay the ashram. We, we live in an ashram for pay the, the monthly, you no? Know? And we're doing some kind of pastels or empanadas, and we sell on the street for making money. And the secret here was the spicy, green spicy, people love it, and put on the empanada. And the empanada sell like very quickly. Big teams, and we make a lot of money. And one time we was in a certain area that he was no like very, clear, uh, it was a little dangerous. When three guys coming and we, I feel in the intentions because I, I, I don't know, I feel in the energy, they come in with buttons, you know? And she, she feeling too, but she said, oh no, this guy is coming to us. And exactly they come in and they take it out some knives and they say, why is, oh, you make good money, no? you have good money. <laughs> and then she tells to them, no, you know, this money is no us. This money is for help people to awaken it and open the heart. And we cheer a lot of sasan to them. And that was magical. They changed. One of the guys he said, you know, I recommend that you guys get out of this area <laughs> because this area is very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, <laughs> I don't know what happened, but uh, we have any bad intentions and I don't know why like, we cannot do this. Go, go, go quickly. That was very strong message like when you are on the path of the truth, all the windows and divine protection, they are open for you. Mm. Like on the Bhagavad Gita, he said, when you follow the truth, when you find out yourself, the Bhagavad Gita, he said, all the power of the nation, on all powers of the divine, they are with you. They protect you. Mm. And that's happening. Mm. It's amazing. Uh, in too many stories like this, mm. I have after the this too. You know that you come to feel in the divine protection. Mm. And I think so everybody having stories like this in the life, like they call miracles or they call thanks God or thanks to the divine. Mm. No? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So connection is protection. I like that. 
I mean, certainly connection, when we are connected, it can help to protect us from thoughts <laughs> that may not be um, the best. especially when there is a divine quality to the connection, the connections that you have. That it's almost like the, what I'm getting, almost like the tree of light, that, that there is a certain light that encompasses you or can do that. Um, yeah, I'm complete. The secret cord. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. I'll go. So Henry, are you, are you the host? Can you put me on host for a screen share? Because I'm going to show you a picture of a connection I just took a picture of while I was sitting there. I know, I know we did it. And one other group, and I was able to show what was on my. I think I have to be host or co host to share the screen. Other good of the whole is the host, um, and it's not allowing me to to change it to you, okay. to you right now. Sorry. That's okay. Can co-host share a screen or only host? Only host, right? Well, I let let let's see. One minute. Share a screen. Looks like. Anyway, a it's a great picture. Um, it's my cat and my dog were sitting, of course, because I listened to this. <clears throat> If you can't pull it up, we'll figure it out some other time. But so I'm sitting on the deck, and it is just this lovely day. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe my all my problems go away. Um, oh. the, mean, the dog and the cat. The dog and the cat had their heads on the deck railing, like just looking out at the beautiful day and like listening to you guys talk. And they're like best friends. So, like. <laughs> What's that connection, you know, between a cat and a dog? What what do they feel? You know? I mean, it's a real relationship. And then the fact that like animals even hang out with us, that's that's pretty amazing, you know, and how the animals come to Carol and can, I mean can, can you uh share now? Try try again. I I it's a really nice picture. I mean I can save it. Let's see. See if, I'll you, go to my... see if you can now. I... Okay, hang on. All right. So I go to photo and then I can go to the gallery. You see them? Yes. Uh... So there they are, and they were they were listening to you guys, and I mean. There's a lot of peace there, <laughs> you know, just a nice, peaceful, tranquil day. And then as soon as I took the picture here and I'll come off of here now. Well, as soon as I took the picture, then the cat came over here and like tried to walk in front of the screen again. So I know all the animals love the connection field and maybe because I have good energy when I'm in it. I mean, I'm usually have good energy around animals. Um, but, you know, there's all kinds of interactions going on and connections. And if we're still enough and quiet and realize we're part of it, we're in that, you know, I'm with the cat and the dog. We're all sitting here in peace. The birds are eating bird seed. There are hawks screeched and the trees are just lovely. Like when the colors, you know, and they lose their chlorophyll and, you know, the leaves are dying, but it's like really beautiful. and. It's just an amazing, like there's just moments like that in nature where you feel 
like you're on some kind of drug, but you're not, you know, not that maybe I've never been, but I mean, it's that it's, it's almost a psychedelic experience to have communion like that, or even a connection. I'm in Virginia in central Virginia here. I'm going to take the picture off. Thanks, Henry. Sure. So that's really oh, easy. If you, if you, that was you beautiful. Have, Thank you. For yeah. You're well, you're welcome because I was just so many things went through my head of connection to talk about, but I just definitely, and now there's a really nice wind blowing through the trees, you know, like it's all, you know, and I, and I think humans do have, it's going to sound a little arrogant, but we have some sort of command over our environment that we've lost touch with, not command, but like, like the, the trees and the animals are, are aware of us, of our presence, you know, just like we should be aware of them, but they're, they're looking to us for, but to be stewards of the earth, you know, the guardians of the earth, the keepers of the earth, they're like, come on, you know? <laughs> and so that's just connecting with nature like that is amazing. Whatever it is, whatever, you know. And then the other one I had was just <laughs> then now a bee came up and like made me look at my third eye. But um, just doing the Japa Mala meditation with Linda, Japa Mala Mama Linda at 10 o'clock at night. I think we're on day 19 tonight. But I tell you what, you know, and Martin does it. Do you? But the chant is Om Shante, Om Salam, Om Shalom, Om. You know, and it's the different words for peace and greetings and different. You know, Hindu is Shanti, Salam, Arabic, Shalom, Hebrew, and then home. And I tell you what, you really go to a space. And it's always hard for me at first, you know, and I've done Japa Mala. I, I do it as a meditation. And, but I never did it with a group like that with an intention. And sometimes it's so hard to just get going in the rhythm or, but at the end, everybody, it's just a different, your brain goes into a different state and you can't even really talk. Like we hang out a little bit. And Miranda does it with her daughter, you know, and her daughter always, the Phoenix stories are called because Phoenix is like this little guru. You have to hear some of the stories Miranda tells. Um, so that's really amazing. And I just think in the connection field, I mean, how some people, I don't know, I think someone maybe asked John or someone was telling the story about, well, what do you get out of sitting there in the connection field? What, like what you're getting something out of a Zoom call, you know, because I guess people are Zoomed out. Um, and it is really an amazing connection. I mean, it's, it's like, well, wow, it's like a lifeline right now for me. And I was supposed to be where I'm at with no vehicle and figuring out what I'm going to do to stay alive financially or just whatever, whatever. I can't go anywhere. I have to rely on like public transportation or a neighbor and the public transportation only runs two days a week. So here I am <laughs> in this beautiful place with my dogs in the woods, you know, getting into Zoom, just waiting for direction, you know, I'm trying to find my own inner direction. But had my car not blown an engine, I would have probably still been running around like a crazy person. Not that I wasn't connected and get into some Zoom calls in the connection field. But it's an amazing connection. And you might tell some people, I try to invite people in, they're like, oh, well, what's the cost? And what's, I'm like, no, just go in. I go, you can go in, you know, you don't, you can just say hi. You don't even have to speak or get on the video. Check out a few, see if it'll help you. Like people I know going through hard times, like maybe this will help you. And some people are very receptive to checking that out. And other people are like, I don't think that's for me right now because they're just in fear. But it's like, I don't feel like there's a gimmick. You know, like we're talking about being mentoring steward. Well, I jump right down the mentoring steward, but I'm just trying to pay my electric bill right now. I'm like, I can figure out 25 bucks a month. And in the meantime, I'm just going to learn about it. You know, 
and whatever it's called. I mean, to be a group or volunteer, at least to be a host or do something. Um, because, you know, Martin talks about with people, I mean, I just feel a great connection and I never shake any of your hands. But I feel like, you know, we like open up our heart doors, you know. And um, so it makes me feel more alive and more colorful and, and I feel good in a whole. I feel like a whole being that maybe this is like, the, this is a full potential. Like, I feel like these are real relationships, you know. And when you see parts of other people, you see yourself. And I mean, I think for the most part, what I've witnessed is is a lack of competition, not maybe 100% or there's not some friction here and there. But, you know, it's an amazing connection of tranquility and peace. Even if we're not quite sure what the end goal is or, you know, what everyone's goals are or what where everything is going right now. It's like we're in the same space at Satsang, you know, and we're just holding that space. And how Julie holds that energy in the morning, I could not come out of that one today. <laughs> you know, I just stayed on, but I was like, do I really have to come back? <laughs> you know, it's like I was out in the Milky Way when you do the heart thing and you envelop the whole planetary system and you're in the Milky Way. I'm out there. I'm in the Milky Way. I'm not coming back. I'm, not, you know, I'm out here for now. So, you know, elation, joy, all those things you mentioned, you know, when there's a good connection, and even with Alberto, he had a connection where he sensed negativity, like a not a good situation for him to be in, but he had that divine protection with the connection, and he, he got away unharmed, you know, and, you know, there's something about that, and it is mad, and I think the more we open it, so if you go to ever of any of Oriana's time crystal cathedral or, or pool of wonder, she goes into the heart, gets you to open up your heart and see from the heart and go heart first. It is a whole nother world. And we have to practice. It's like exercise, you know? So like, this is a workout for the soul. And, um, and it feels right. Like I don't question it. It's like this, this is perfect that I get to sit, and spend time and Tuesdays are great. And I never miss you, Henry. I was actually taking a nap. I never can nap in the daytime. And I even set my timer. I'm like, oh I'm like I can't I gotta go I gotta go to the global heart think tank. And I'm so glad I did. You know, so you know, one door closes, many other doors open, I say. And um I guess that's my soapbox for the day. So thank you. And I love to be with you all and um I love to hear the stories and Henry, you always have a hold a really good space. So I just I thank you all and I love you all. I am complete. Thank you, Susan. You shared many different kinds of connection, which for the Esco Eskimos might have different words for each one but just the one most recently that you expressed is, is almost like we're creating a frequency. And you could say it's, it's, you know, especially when it's, there's an active presence, it's like a charging station. Like we charge our phones. We're coming in here to, to charge ourselves with with a certain energy with energy of the heart with the energy of of each of our heart offerings heart presence and you use the, the cord yeah it, it's it's so like it's like and we're cultivating our musical abilities that each of us we can come to the charging station but we ourselves become better charging stations um, and able to, to share that as we become more confident in it and we, we expand more fully the portals that are opening for us in ourselves. Um, some of the most powerful, you know, Susan touched on it and, and Henry, you, you're here and you've been in those rooms as well where we have meditated 
together and had the most enriching um, meditations that I've ever had in my life. Um, and it's different in a way than being in a group meditation or group chanting where you're all physical and you feel that still. You get it. You can tell when somebody comes in, I can tell, um, I think that you all can as well, when somebody comes into the room and has had a blissful sort of day or like I used to call it a Zen day where, you know, like Susan has it from this morning's meditation and it hangs on. But after 99% of the times that we do Japa Mala, we're all sitting there in this daze and haze and just peaceful bliss to the, the point where we want to have conversation, but we're basking in each other's glow so much, we don't have to have conversation. So there is almost like a telepathic communication that is happening, what, what I'm hearing or what I sense from what you just said about the end of a Japamala meditation is that there is communication happening. Well, there's communion happening, but there's also a kind of a telepathic uh, communication or communion happening, which, which is something I try to invite into sharings for people to become more aware of that because I think that's we are, where we are headed towards, you know, as we cultivate the, our own music, we cultivate our own secret chords and which is, you know, is based in, in the heart presence. And just that conversation right there, just that part that you added, um, somehow got my uh, third eye glowing. Um, I think just because you put words to that sensation or just the, or the, the memory connection of where it goes and stuff like that. Uh, Raul gets mine going all the time because he does third eye exercises. And it's funny, sometimes he's just in on the morning fire or somewhere else. And just the sound of my his voice, my third eye goes like, oh, there's Raul, what's next? I remember one time I was in meditation in a group. We, it was called a knowledge session. It was um, a review of a knowledge session where we were practicing some techniques that Prem Rawa had given us to go inside. And it was nice, it was quiet. But when he walked in the room, I mean, everyone had their eyes closed, but all of a sudden, the energy changed in the room and it became like so soft and so sweet and so gentle and so, oh, so nice. And the energy changed, you know? And that's the, one of those connections that, that I think when we're in the presence of somebody who has elevated themselves that much, that we can feel that and we can be with it by being connected to it. So many different kinds of connections. Like you said, the food for thought, Henry. Thank you. And connecting to reality which is another kind of connection. It is currently 333, it's 333. So um, 
Yeah, actually, I lost track of time, and I just was called back to that um, in the conversation. So, yes, thank thank you all for joining us, and and maybe in the coming week, open to your experience of different kinds of connection, whether it be to something magical, a connection with people, with animals, with um, and opening to your secret cord and opening to the secret cord in those that you meet, those that you know, and even strangers. And, and share, you know, maybe if you're drawn to, you know, just journal a little about that or, ju or just we'll, we'll come back to that next week when we meet. And thank you all for joining in. So, so let's take a few breaths together. We started with a few laughs at the beginning, but maybe just do a few breaths together and open to the inner smile, which may or may not translate to an outer smile. As we bring our sharing to a close, as we are opening to our fuller, our full potential and ourselves as whole beings, as we expand the portals, as we expand the wisdom, the knowing within our hearts and within each of us. Thank you all.